This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the worship of God here at First Presbyterian Church, Woodbridge. It is a delight to be back in your presence with you this morning, particularly in this very, very busy day of worship. Uh, we will be baptizing Trudy Evangeline Valesco today during worship. I also invite all of the children forward ahead of that baptism for a children's chat. And then after church today, there will be a wedding here in the sanctuary. Amanda Walsh is wedding Kevin uh, Mayen and that will be taking place here this afternoon. And so it is a busy day in the life of this congregation. Um, I would also like to welcome, here I am as pulpit supply, and here we have the replacement of the supply, of the supply organist. The supply organist who is here with this church in August could not be present today, and Carl is on vacation. And so we are delighted to have Chris Pasalka with us today. Chris is recently retired at from the organ ministry, having served Christ's Episcopal Church in Shrewsbury. Did you tell me for 21 years? 20 years. For 20 years. So we welcome you this day. Thank you. We're so glad you're here. And Fran asked me to make an announcement, but Todd is here. So Todd, do you want to make the announcement? Or do you want me to about, about the application? Okay, so I'll, I'll start and then you can add on. So it seems as though the Township of, Wood, of Woodbridge is seeking firefighters. They have copies of the posting here at the church and I'm sure you can speak to Todd as well and I also believe Fran has it. And Todd, would you like to add anything on? Thank you, Todd. Are there any other announcements today? Are there any joys and concerns that anyone would like to share? Hi, Tony. Say, could you tell me the name again? Aileen Clayton. In JFK. And she had a back operation. We certainly send her um, healing wishes and prayers, and uh, particularly prayers for those who are seeing to her recovery at JFK. Thank you, Tony. Anything else? Yes, <laughs> Renee. Well, Renee, we will be keeping her and you and the staff where she is residing uh, in our prayers as well. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Well, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to today's prelude.
morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Behold the gathering of God's own. Besides leaders and among the apostles, drawn together as disciples and doubters, we are shoulder to shoulder with shepherds and saints. Since we are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses, Let us worship God. Let us pray. Faithful God, you have blessed us with the inheritance of grace that we might live as people of justice, righteousness, and peace. Stir in us your power and fill us with the love of Christ, strong and true, that we may be always eager to serve your promised reign of peace. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join us in hymn 321, The Church's One Foundation.
Trusting in God's hope for us, let us come before God with contrite hearts, asking for reconciliation and seeking peace. God of hope, we confess our disregard of your care, our doubt of your providence, and our blindness to signs of your love. We are afraid to risk our comforts to find new life. We separate ourselves from you and from others and foster divisions between those you love. Help us to amend our lives and make us your faithful people who bear the good fruit of your word on the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone, and a new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven, and be at peace. Amen. be seated. Oh, I hear a lot of singing over here. That sounded great. At this time, I would like to invite all of the children to come meet me at this chair over here, and I'll be down in one second for the children's chat, followed by the baptism. Now you're off to preschool. 
And you like all of your sharks, right? Yeah. And look how much you have grown. And in fact, you do look a lot like Trudy in this picture. And today is a really special day for Trudy, isn't it? Today is Trudy's baptism. And you all are witnesses to it, right? So you guys can take a little picture in your mind, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of pictures taken as well, to remember Trudy's baptism today. And you know, Simon, when you went to VBS this year, that was really important because every time a child is baptized in this congregation, the whole congregation takes a vow to nurture that child in the faith. And so they were nurturing you by teaching you Bible stories and, and having snack time and science time and music time and art time and all those fun things at Vacation Bible School. And so we are going to be reminded today, even everybody in this congregation is going to be reminded of their own baptism. Because when we baptize a child or when we baptize an adult, we are reminded that we are part of God's household, that we are part of God's family in Jesus Christ. And that's what we're going to celebrate here in just a minute. But first, I'm going to offer you a prayer, okay? All right. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you for all in this congregation who will witness Trudy's baptism and who will nurture her in faith. Allow your spirit to dwell on this place, teaching all children that they are loved and that they indeed are welcome. All right, so you don't have to move. You can sit right there. You get front row seats for the baptism, okay? All right, put this down. And would you like to come forward? Thank you. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Please join with me in that which is printed in the bulletin. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Relying on God's grace, do you promise to nurture Trudy in the life and faith of the Christian community? Do we as members of the Church of Jesus Christ promise to guide and nurture Trudy by word and deed with love and prayer? We do. Will you encourage her to know, trust, and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of this church? We will. Through the sacrament of baptism, we enter the covenant God has in Jesus Christ. Within this covenant, God gives us new life, guards us from evil, and nurtures us in love. Through this covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. So I have perfecting questions for the parents. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? Who is your Lord and Savior? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? And now, as the children of God, let us affirm our faith, professing the words of the Apostles' Creed, which is printed in your bulletin. Why don't we all stand for that? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Praise to you, O God, for the gift of water, for creating this blue orb and giving it to us as our home, for saving us from the flood and blessing us with a new start, for leading us through the sea from slavery to freedom. Thank you for baptizing Jesus in the water of the Jordan, that we might be baptized with him, and for welcoming us to the river of the water of life, where we will be raised with him. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us faithful this day, renewing us with your life-giving water until we enter your eternal realm, singing songs of praise. Amen. Do you want to hold it or do you want me to? Are we going to give it a try? Hi there. Hi, sweets. <laughs> it's tough when you're one. It's tough when you're one year old. over here, okay? Through the Evangeline, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Through the Evangeline, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit through the waters of baptism, and you have been marked as Christ's own forever. I got you all wet. Come here, sweetheart. Okay? All right? Do you want to take a walk with me so I can show you off? How about mom walks with me so we can show you off? Do you want to walk? This is not typical that we have someone that walks. Can I have your can I hold your baby doll's finger? You want to walk along? Come on, Simon. Come on. Well, here I'd like to welcome the newest member of the household of God and Christ's family. This is Trudy Evangeline. I will get it right. It was just printed incorrectly in what Lynn had. Okay. And she is the little sister of Alice and Simon, who have also been baptized here in this church. And every time we baptize a child, we are reminded of our own baptism. We are reminded of God's free gift of grace that we do not earn, that we do not achieve. It's just freely given to us. And so it is always a wonderful day when we can present someone in baptism in the church because they are becoming members of God's family. And I always think it's wonderful, having served here for, for quite a few years, that this congregation takes very seriously their baptismal promise that they make to children, nurturing them in the faith, providing for their Christian nurture in Sunday school, Friday fun nights, vacation Bible school, youth group, mission trips, and out into the world um, as they discover their own identity in Christ. So uh, we have a few, we have the flower, and we have a, we have the baptismal certificate for Trudy. There is, and there is also a gift from CE that is on its way, and also um, this book called Baptism Promises, which I was going to read to the children and forgot. So, <laughs> anyhow, it's a really short book. Let me take a second, and you can see the pages in it. Okay, it's called Baptism Promises, and it says, your baptism was a very special day. On this special day, our family said, we want you to be baptized. We promise that we will try to live as Jesus taught. We will teach you to live this way, too. Everybody in the church said, we promise to help you. We will teach you Bible stories and show you how to live as Jesus taught. We promise to love and pray for you and your family. Everyone smiled when the pastor put water on your head and said, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now everyone knows that you are a child of God. God promises to always, always love you. 
10 and 18 stitches. And then there are some prayers in the back. Okay? So this is a gift. Okay? Yeah, and you're getting so old that soon you'll be able to read that book to your sister and little sister, right? Thank you. So, yeah, go ahead. Let us pray. God of wisdom, we eagerly seek your presence in our lives and in the world. By your spirit, speak your word to us and give us your grace to recognize the abundant signs of your care for us so that we might be free to act in the world with courage and abandon. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 29 through 12, verse 2. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection, Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commanded by their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better, so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God.
Our gospel lesson today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 49 through 56. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowd, when you see a cloud rising in the east, you immediately say, it is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be. Late in the spring, I received a phone call from Reverend Marie. It was an invitation by her and the session to serve as pulpit supply, to preside at the baptism of Trudy, and to officiate the wedding of Amanda Walsh and Kevin Mann that happens this afternoon. Well, the phone call gave me pause. While I was excited to return to this place that holds such wonderful memories of ministry and mission, I then read the assigned text for this week, especially today's gospel text, and I cringed. It's not really an easy text to return to as pulpit supply. Today's text from Luke is difficult. It is difficult to hear the tone of Jesus' voice prompted by all of those exclamation points in the text. If you count them, I believe there are four. But mostly I believe it is difficult because it is uncomfortable to hear a passage of judgment, to hear divine imperatives from the mouth of the one that we call the Prince of Peace. But sometimes, Getting to a place of peace requires a disruptive voice to call us out of complacency, reorienting and straightening us out. It was true in biblical times throughout history and is still true today. And that is how we progress towards the fulfillment of Christ's kingdom on earth. We should not be surprised by this passage nor its tone. When Jesus begins his ministry, we are provided with his mission statement. Jesus says he is called to bring good news to the poor, liberty to the captives, and freedom for the oppressed. Not exactly the good news people in power were expecting. In today's text, we can't help but be reminded of the words of John the baptizer, who announced, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquestionable fire. In today's passage, Jesus makes clear that bringing this fire to earth is what he was baptized to do. Those in a position of social, political, economic, and religious power hear the gospel message as a threat because it would shift their way of life. What is good news for some people and the way that is chosen by some, those who hear and accept and believe this message and the messenger, sounds disorienting 
and disruptive to others. Jesus' tone is intense. His speech is fueled by what has transpired along the way, particularly his confrontations with the scribes and the Pharisees. We have heard this throughout the summer lectionary text. Jesus has gently chided Martha for her lack of focus and distraction, saying Mary has chosen the good or better part. We have heard it also this summer in parable form. He called out the rich farmer with the abundant yield, calling him a fool for being so self-absorbed and for not giving praise to God and for not sharing his bounty with those in need. Again and again, Luke exposes the scribes and the Pharisees' allegiance to oppressive laws at the expense of their community's well-being. Rather than have the care of the widow, the orphan, and the needy at the center of their concern, these leaders are concerned with themselves. In this passage, we get a glimpse of Jesus' exasperation with those in the crowd who still don't comprehend the kingdom of God as he is living it out and as he is describing it. Already they have forgotten Jesus' teaching, blessed are those who listen. Jesus is passionate. He is no nonsense. His message is urgent. He implores his disciples to look closely and to see beneath the surface. He urges the disciples to understand that something new is happening. But Jesus fears that even those closest to to him may miss out. He is marking hard boundaries, drawing a line in the sand, and calling for people to make up their minds now about where they will stand. It is a pivotal moment in Luke's gospel. Jesus identifies himself as one who comes to bring divine fire to the earth. But what are we to make of this? Is this fire Jesus brings to earth a cleansing fire that burns away impurities? Might this reference to fire be the ever-expanding Holy Spirit that God sends at Jesus' baptism, that is then released at Pentecost upon those who follow Jesus. The side of Jesus we witness and hear is one ready to let God's Spirit have its way on earth, calling each person to make the costly choice, the way of the world or the way of the kingdom. Jesus' tone is impassioned, Jesus' words of division within the household are, at first glance, alarming and upsetting. But I believe that we can view his language about divided households through a pastoral lens. Jesus did not come for the narrow purpose of causing strife within families. He did not come to create the pain that results when parents and siblings and in-laws find themselves set against each other. Nor did he come simply to keep nuclear families happy as an end in and of itself. Jesus came with a greater purpose. He came to create a new family. His new family requires loyalty to a larger family, the household of God. The transforming power of God's holy love can be met with resistance and hostility. Think a moment about those in the crowd who listened, who obeyed Jesus' teaching and were changed, those who left their old lives behind, reorienting themselves with the way of Christ. As Jesus told them, it would not be easy. In our lesson from Hebrews, the writer's audience and focus is on those raised in the Jewish faith who found their home in the fledgling Christian community. We can understand how they might be feeling discouraged and demoralized. They experienced division from their former lives firsthand. They felt excluded from the mainstream of society and felt politically, socially, economically, they felt that pressure from those who maintained power. Think about it. The assembled flocks hearing these words are themselves Jewish converts or first-generation Christians who have made a stand by faith. Like Trudy baptized today, they too were set apart, 
sealed by the water of baptism and marked as Christ's own, incorporated into the household of God through baptism, confessing Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So in today's passage from Hebrews, we find words of encouragement as they, those people, navigate a life of faith. In this passage, faith is presented as the courage to endure, to embolden this little band of Christians struggling with hostility and ridicule for following in the way of Christ. Well, what has helped God's people deal with discouragement since the beginning is the knowledge that we are not alone. So the author reminds them that they and we follow in the footsteps of people from the earliest biblical times who were unsure of what the future held for them. They and we follow in the footsteps of saints who along the way chose to trust God anyway. We follow a God who does not abandon us in times of trouble. When we follow the path path of staying focused on Jesus Christ, we too are able to endure. Faith allows people to see beyond what is right in front of them, to see what God is doing in their midst, and to see what God has done throughout the ages. We trust the God who stayed true to our ancestors in faith and stays true to us too. Hebrews 11 challenges us to endure suffering and to look to Jesus, who endured the cross and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The call in this passage is a call to endurance. The author writes that Jesus endured the cross and endured suffering for the joy that was set before him. Therefore, we as baptized members of the body of Christ and members of the household of God have much to look forward to. For Christ, through his life, death, and resurrection, made the world turn. Christ did not come to judge the world through the established legalistic standards of the time, but rather Christ came to judge the world for the purpose of making straight our path, reorienting us, putting us in right relationship so that God's holy love can permeate all relationships. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Amen.
Let us lift our hearts to the Lord. Let us pray. God of mercy, throughout the ages you have led us through trial and hardship, providing all our needs and speaking words of promise. Confident in your faithfulness, we bring to you our own prayers for the world. We pray for the mission of your church, that it may plant and grow faithful people to serve others in love. We pray for the world, that all might tend to your justice and watch for your coming reign. We pray for all who suffer, that our care for them may reveal your healing. We pray this day especially for Aileen Clayton, who has had a back operation and is recovering at JFK. We pray for Renee's mom, giving all thanks and praise for her 100th birthday. Yet we pray for her this day out of concern for testing positive to COVID. We pray for all who are surrounding her, comforting her, and taking care of her this day. We pray also for Amy's cousin, Chris, who has recently been released from the hospital uh, due to an infection. And we pray for continued strength and healing. Lord, as your people, we pray for all of your creation, that all may flourish in your wisdom. We remember before you all who have died and pray for those who will die this day that they may rest in light divine. Through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. And so we are bold to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our God, who is faithful, blesses us with an abundance of gifts. In gratitude, let us offer all that we have and all that we are for the love of Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Our offering can be given online. It can be mailed in to the church or dropped off here at the church, or it can be placed uh, in one of the offering plates, either up here or there is a, pl a plate in the back by where George is standing right now as you leave worship this day. Please stand for the doxology. Let us pray. God of the ages, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, we faithfully add our gifts to those who have gone before us throughout the generations. Bless these gifts that they may yield an increase for the spreading of your love in the world. Amen. <laughs> 